The 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, the heavy rains caused major flooding across the island, the high waters leaving many stranded on covered roadways. Our Daniel Paris with a look at the impacts. Plus, early voting now open in Tumon, Decision 2022, takes us there where we speak with the first set of voters ready to pick Guam's leaders. And who pulled the trigger in the drive-by shooting in Agena Heights that sent a man to the hospital? more questions surface in the criminal trial ongoing against defendant Nicholas Moore. Hop day and good evening everyone. Welcome to Prime Time this Tuesday. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devonzo. So glad you could join us. And topping our newscast this evening, we begin with a breaking news update to the deadly crash in Harmon. The man killed after his motorcycle crashed along Route 16, now four days ago, has been identified as 37-year-old Jesse James Sablon II. Police saying the medical examiner confirmed his identity as investigators had no luck finding Sablon's family. Sablon died at the scene after the bike he was riding crashed into a car along Route 16 late Friday night. No arrests have been made. Torrential rain and flooded streets from the north to the south of the island, no matter where you were, if you were outside, you definitely saw the impact. And no doubt the nonstop rainy day today causing quite a bit of flooding from Pago Bay, Polaris Point and everywhere else in between. Our Daniel Perez was on scene at one of those flooded sites. Here's more. In the village of Chalampago, Ordot, one street was so flooded a school bus carrying high school students got stranded. According to the bus driver, they had been stuck for quite a while before one resident from the village pulled them out. Lauren Agar lives near the flooded street and detailed that the flooding in the area is common. It gets pretty bad. Our mayor is aware. Uh, they have tried to dig up the side before and that kind of helped, but not too much. Uh, so whenever it does rain, it gets pretty bad. It takes usually about uh, half of the day in order for it to drain out. So a lot of times we're just stuck here. <laughs> just because of where we live, the road just has that little dip before you get to the top of the hill. And so the ones that are on the hill, we kind of just have to wait it out and just go from there with Mother Nature. And wait they do when the flood rolls in, but some of the residents who live on the street still need to go places or to work, some even going as far as paddleboarding through the flood just to get across. Matthew Keskassen lives right near where it usually gets flooded. His mom had mentioned to him about the severe flooding, but today was the first time he actually saw it firsthand. I'm not sure if something's clogged up. Maybe there's a, a clog somewhere where the water's supposed to go. Uh, maybe that has to be uh, taken a look at and you know, taken care of. That way it's not an inconvenience for us. Residents are urged to be on the lookout for floods in their area and on the main roads, as the island is currently in the flood watch until tomorrow, so expect more rain. As for the bus full of students, KUAM did speak to the man seen towing it out of the flood, who said he was just happy to help. He was also seen assisting in pulling other cars to safety. Daniel Perez, KUAM News. Well, the countdown is on to Super Tuesday, the general 28 days left until the general election when each of the village districts open their polling sites. But today we've been showing you just how the race is on for the upcoming election. Early voting starting this morning. KUAM was there speaking with voters who wasted no time hitting the polls. In early morning for the Guam Election Commission, KUAM exclusively covering the process from the ballots being ruled out from the GEC offices into morning early Tuesday. Guam police escorting the ballot boxes to the Western Resort in Tumon. That's where we ran into Franklin Rivera of Ordot and Benny Roslin of Petey, both first in line, ready to choose Guam's leaders. The first one, you're here an hour before it even opened. Um, I didn't even know what time it was going to start yet. <laughs> I was brought over for my friend who's uh, uh, helping out with the voting, with the um, election. 
and um, you know. You wanted it. to be first in line? Yeah. I want to be the first one also in general election. And and in fact, we never, we never know, you know, uh, tomorrow I might get sick or never know. So that's why I decided to vote early. No need to wait for one thing. Uh, it, it is choice whether you vote or not. But all those people, they have the right if they want to vote. So that's why I'm here to vote early because it's my right. The day off to a slow and steady start as voters will have until November 3rd to make it out to the early voting center in Tumont. Close to 200 people voting by midday Tuesday. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangolinen. Bring your photo ID. We don't accept IDs on the phone or copies. We need to see the actual ID. Driver's license, passport. Yeah, uh, even high school, Guam high school IDs, both public and private. University of Guam IDs and GCC IDs and Government of Guam employee IDs are also acceptable. They do not have to be current. Um, so uh, according to the law, they have to be validly issued. Residents can register to vote here as well. Early voting is held from Tuesday to Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. District satellite early voting will be held October 15th at Ukudu High, on the 22nd at GCC, and the 29th at Marizo Martyrs Elementary. Homebound voting also available to schedule homebound voting called the GEC at 671-477-9791. One justice and two judges up for retention in the CNMI November general election. And one of those judges received more than a handful of deficient marks for performance on the bench. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia reports. The Bar Association really does this as a service to the public. Um, the community is really entitled to have people um, serving as judges that are, um, you know, they have integrity, um, they're courteous and competent, and they, they uphold um, a, a very high standard of the administration of justice. Three members of the judiciary are up for a retention vote this November. Attorneys with the NMI Bar Association handing out report cards, evaluating each of them based on criteria ranging from experience to temperament on a scale starting from one, unacceptable seldom meeting the minimum standards of performance, to five, excellent. Just as John A. Maglonia received good ratings across the board. Judge Joseph Camacho received acceptable ratings all around, but Judge Wesley Bogdan is bogged down with deficient ratings for a vast majority of the criteria. The American Bar Association actually found um, these standards to be necessary to be able to um, evaluate judges standing for um, not just retention, but also for nomination. Over 27 attorneys responded to the survey out of the 165 active Bar Association members. Hudson says attorneys respond for judges they've appeared before and also attributes that number to confidentiality concerns of its members. She says she hopes the evaluations help the public make reasoned decisions about whether to retain candidates. For a lot of the public, unless you have a court case, um, you're not likely to appear in front of multiple judges. Um, whereas members of the bar associations um, typically do have that experience. Tomas Maglonia for KUAM News. Progress today in the trial against defendant Nicholas Wayne Moore in Superior Court. And while it's making some movement, questions still remain on who really fired the gun in the 2020 drive-by shooting in Aganya Heights. It's clear someone was shot and rushed to Naval Hospital. I saw the bandages. Um, there was someone his, his, uh, his shoulder from a shot, uh, someone his wrist from the IV, and there was a bandage on his right leg, uh, right above the knee. Guam Police Detective Eric Mondia is the prosecutor's next witness to take the stand. Mondia testifying today in the long drawn out trial against Nicholas Moore in Superior Court. Defense attorney David Lujan digging during cross-examination following weeks of testimony from Eric Salone. Salone, Moore's co-actor, previously testified that Moore fired a round before Salone then pulled the trigger. But investigators say they were given a different story. Isn't it true that according to the investigation by Mr. Palacios, that Curtis Garrido also said that Nick Moore was not the shooter. That, that is correct. correct. That is correct. And that he saw Nick Moore driving the pickup, you know, with both hands on the steering wheel. Isn't that correct? That was his statement to yeah. Detective Plush. 
A witness also allegedly told investigators there was only one shooter. There's evidence that Salon is the one that shot the 38, according to his friend, Javier Mercado. Right, there, there is a statement that says that, yes. Yeah. Ultimately, the jury will decide if Moore is responsible for firing the shot that hit the victim, sending him to the hospital. And we have more news coming up. Keep it here to KUM News. Half a day. I'm Tom Fisher. Here's the harsh reality. A trip to the grocery store for the basics, eggs, bag of rice, butter, can of Spam, milk, costs almost 30 bucks. And that's just five items. The cost of living continues to grow, but the money doesn't. We need to roll back the business privilege tax to reduce Guam's cost of living, and I will make that happen. Vote Thomas Fisher for Senator. If you want different, vote different. I'm Tom Fisher, and I approve this message. I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of the infiltration of crystal meth in our families and in our neighborhoods, yet no drug task force to stem the flow of drugs is anywhere in sight. We are disgusted in the increase in violent crimes and the decrease in police officers. We are outraged at witnessing the absence of leadership and action until six months before the election. We are sick of knowing that if one of our loved ones gets very sick, GMH may not be safe enough for them. We have hope because we see the honesty of Governor Felix Camacho and Senator Tony Atta. We have faith that they will take care of all the people, including the forgotten. The struggling. The in and the out. In this election, we're voting for values. For fairness. For equality and equity. For leadership that works from day one. We are voting for Camacho Ada. I'm Felix Camacho and I approve this message. My name is Leonza Salvage and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think it's something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Panilin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful for the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. Power on with the strength of a Ram during Ram Power Days, happening now at Cars Plus Guam. Save up to $8,000 off on a brand new Ram truck today. My name is Jose Delgado, and you can contact me at 671-929-3645 to schedule a test drive, or you can visit our website at carsplusguam.com to learn more. Cars Plus, driven by you. Buenas, I'm Amanda Shelton. Whether creating the first Veterans Bill of Rights, increasing scholarship funding for college students, creating the Opioid Recovery Fund, providing pandemic relief to companies, or pushing to raise the cost of living for our Manamku, my time as a lawmaker has always been about empowering people. Please re-elect Amanda Shelton for Senator, Johnny Cole Torres Treasurer. Welcome back to Your News Leader. Well, for the past two weeks, there's been an overflow of patients at the Guam Memorial Hospital's Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. The flurry of child hospitalizations were a result of not just the seasonal flu, but some other very aggressive viruses. Hospital officials, though, are breathing a huge sigh of relief as the number of cases are finally easing. Nesta Lakanto reports. Because the pediatric ICU was filled to capacity at one point, the hospital was forced to open a second room to handle the overflow of young children with breathing difficulties. Internal medicine and pediatric specialist, Dr. Akua Agiman. The human metanuma and rhinovirus have been pretty aggressive. Uh, the children have been very, very sick. They've been requiring intubation. Some of them lengths of stay almost two weeks. 
And, and for most of that time, they've been on increased risk respiratory support. She says the typical stay at the ICU is three or four days, but these recent cases lasted much longer, adding to the overflow conditions. And as the lone pediatric ICU on island, GMH was also getting referrals from GRMC and the Naval Hospital. I was very grateful that we had that many respirators because I was not expecting to have to have that many children with respiratory distress. And I think probably COVID was a good practice run for GMH. During this flu season, parents of infants and young children are advised to be on the lookout for any breathing difficulties and also keep an eye out for their older siblings as well. I would say if you have, you know, pretty young children uh, around the 18 months or less, if you have older children who are coming in with colds from school, be careful about letting them play with their children and, you know, pick them up and so on. Because the older kids are fine. They just have a cough and a cold and they do okay. But then the younger ones are the ones coming in. The overflow conditions have now eased and the hospital is ready for any new wave that might come. Now we are at the tail end of everybody who came in over the last two weeks getting better and going home. We are back to uh, business as usual. For KOM News, I'm Nestor Leconto. Recent findings show that suicides among Pacific Islanders and Asian American veterans had drastically increased, so much so that the Rocky Mountain Mental Illness Research Education and Clinical Center in Denver, Colorado, launched a research study. And a team was on island briefly interviewing veterans and stakeholders to learn more and hopefully bring some much needed service to the island. Jonah Gancharfris has more. A pair of teams from the Rocky Mountain Mental Illness Research Education and Clinical Center for Suicide Prevention were on island recently to conduct interviews as part of a study. Lindsay Monteith is a psychologist with the Rocky Mountain Myrick and is leading the research study that is focused on learning more and on how to prevent suicide among Pacific Islanders and Asian American veterans here on Guam. There was a recent finding that uh, the suicide rate among Asian American Pacific Islander veterans had increased pretty drastically. Um, and so because of that, there have been a lot of efforts recently um, that we're undertaking and leading here in the Rocky Mountain Myrick to try to better understand the reasons for that and, and to address it. Um, the visit consisted of interviews and meetings with island veterans and key stakeholders. At the vet center there, at the VA community-based outpatient clinic there, at the mental health center there, and um, also at the University of Guam. Lisa Brenner, the director for the Rocky Mountain Myrick, says that Guam is a really unique and special community and admits after meeting and talking with the people, it would be impossible to really know. A, the amazing humans and then some of the amazing challenges just created by distance um, that people have to contend with. Brenner says although the trip to Guam was brief, the teams were able to get a snapshot of some of the benefits of being within a tight community, the focus on families and all the things that are really strengths and the challenges that were mostly related to distance. The veterans that live in Guam are really the experts on suicide prevention for their peers and really helping and learning from them about how do we take what they know and then help them apply it to their own community. And some of the, the really wonderful thing of this has been um, some individuals recovery process themselves has been to be engaged with other veterans. And so you see this really a beautiful healing that's happening by the people that are involved that are reaching out to the other uh, members of the community. The research study is looking to conduct more interviews via phone and on Zoom with people who have experience working with veterans on Guam and veterans who identify as Pacific Islanders or Asian American who are currently living on the island. Participants will be compensated. If you are interested, you are asked to contact Project Coordinator Christiana Iglesias at 720-723-6556. We should note Iglesias is from Guam, a 2014 graduate from St. John's School who is currently in Denver working with the team. You can also email the study at aapi at va.gov. And so if people email, then we could set up like a, a Zoom link or another link that would kind of bypass some of the maybe cost associated with making phone calls. Exactly. Yes. And we're willing to work. Um, we'll do everything we can to work across time zones too and, and to make this um, work for folks. And Brenner really wants to reiterate that they're super committed to making sure that Guam's veterans' voices are heard. Many folks in Guam had served in the military. How central that was to so many people's lives and how important it is to make sure that individuals who did serve that are from Guam 
have their voices heard. We want to be able to carry messages forward. And we just want people in Guam to know. She even made a special promise to herself. Every day that I work, I'm going to do something specific around suicide prevention for Guam. We're with you and we're, we're remembering everything we learned and we need to learn more. Jonah Gancharfris, KUAM News. Live your truth. It's a message that shines bright this time of year, reminding everyone no matter what, that love is love. Oh, I just love that. And we here at KUAM are sharing that message. Our Matsuki Hariyama has our coordinating for a cause. Hey, happy National Coming Out Day. The celebration, a powerful one for many in the LGBTQ plus community, like Frank Lujan. He admits coming out to his family took courage. At first it was kind of like a rocky start. I did come out to my parents. And at the time, like we grew up as a Catholic household. At the time, um, it was not, I was not ready for it. I was not prepared to, but um, it came up in a conversation and at the time my parents were kind of um iffy in a sense about it like they didn't they weren't prepared for um me coming out he says neither parent ready to hear his news back in 2014 it was a bumpy ride that eventually led him and his family down a road toward acceptance and support a quite funny thing is that my dad literally would go out of his way to go to like this place to buy like something so i have these socks that he bought from las vegas and it says hella gay on it with that comfort luhan adding he also found support among his school friends though his coming out still meant with some difficulty luhan found himself balancing his truth with the beliefs taught in his school you know that whole thing like where they're saying like a family is built on a man and a woman and all those things and then i had a a confirmation teacher who once told me that same exact thing. He's proud of who he is and he says nothing can take that away from him. I didn't feel like pressured from them because in my mind already like um, I know who I am. I know um, what my uh, future will be and I don't want to have that type of negative energy in my life after coming out and like me being actually who I am like I was able to like explore new opportunities and be a part of community that um, shows like basically love and um, all the forms of it. Luhan is living his life loud and with pride, like many others celebrating National Coming Out Day. Today is also a reminder that you don't need to be out to be proud. Matsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. Now for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured today of a gloomy Tumon Bay. The rain battering most of the island throughout the day. The Guam National Weather Service predicting more of the same for Wednesday. Expect to see heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms. Try to stay dry and be safe out there. We leave you with this look and a listen in to Breeze 93.9 FM streaming now on KUAM.com. Fitting for the weather we've been seeing. Here's Ann Peebles. I can't stand the rain. This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier 
for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Doco Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Don't need a work break, keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance, count on us for life and that's where the cheese comes in. I don't get it. It's a thick crust with crispy edges. What is there not to get? The sauce on top? You haven't even tried it yet. You know, she's got a point. I don't want to talk about politics. Detroit style is back at Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I have some soccer and basketball news to get to in just a bit. But first off, some powerlifting for you. Check it out. Powerlifters from around the island stepped onto the platform at Custom Fitness to compete in the squat, bench, and deadlift for total. Competitors were broken up by weight deficiencies. It initially started as a fundraiser you know, for Gerald Martinez. He competes off island. He represents Guam and he holds records. Uh, so we really wanted to bring him out again. He's a full time student. Um, like, yeah, we wanted to just fund his trip. So, and then it turned out to be more than just a fundraiser, it turned out to be something bigger for the community. Uh, when Original Strength started, we wanted to just make it more for to strengthen the community, to build a healthier community. And I really feel like, you know, bringing in the boots, the local businesses, the local power lifters, and with 47 plus lifters, you know, I think we did a great job. I'm ecstatic, actually. I didn't realize the turnout was going to be this big. Switching over to some soccer news, the Happy Mark K League select team placed second at the 15th annual International Korean Football Tournament held in Hapchon, Korea. The team represented Guam against 40 other teams from 16 countries. This was the first time Team Guam of Happy Mark K League ever placed in the annual tournament. In less than a week, some of the island's top high school basketball players will get a chance to test their medal against the region's best at the FIBA 3-on-3 U-17 Asia Cup 2022 in Malaysia. The three-day tournament slated for October 13th through the 16th in Kuala Lumpur will feature athletes from a dozen countries, including powerhouses like Japan, China, the Philippines, New Zealand, and Australia. On the women's team, Guam will be represented by seniors Kaylee Sello, Jada Han, Alura Hernandez, and Jasmine Sampson. All four were members of the U-17 team that recently represented Team Guam in California. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Today. I'm Kalina from Docs Kitty College. And I'm Kristen from Docs Daycare and Preschool. And we are so honored to be caring for the children of Guam. The Governor's Child Care Programs help businesses like ours to really focus on the kids. These programs also help nonprofits and after school programs and grandparents and so many families. Visit www.guamchildcare.com to learn more about the Governor's Child Care Programs. This ad is paid for with funds administered by DPHSS. My name is Vincent Moffness and I'm from the village of Saranya. I had a stroke. So, you know, I'm just in time of recovering right now and, you know, I still need that assistance. I saw the commercial on social media. I thought, let me try, give it a try. I came in and they pointed me to the right person that could help me. 
And after that, it seemed like the process started going a little bit faster. They ended up contacting me a little bit after that. I was able to get my Medicaid approval. I believe in the Relief Center, it, it works. When somebody is willing to go over and beyond for you without question, it touches the heart, you know? It must mean something that, that you know, God put the Relief Center there for a reason because he knows it'll work. And, and the right people are put in the positions with big hearts. Governor Lou Leongaro and Josh has put this program into place and it has helped me more than once. You have definitely helped me immensely. I owe you my life. Thank you. With all my heart, thank you. Welcome back. Salvation Army Guam is looking to make sure families have a spectacular Halloween. Jonah Gancharfras has this week's Giving Every Tuesday. Trick or treat! The fine folks over at Salvation Army Guam will be hosting a harvest festival to include a mini carnival from October 27th, 28th, 29th, and 31st at their main office in Tizen. According to the event organizers, they're expecting to host about 200 or more families and are once again calling on the community partners to ensure the success of the event. With that being said, the Salvation Army is seeking donations of candy to give out on those four days. The Spooky House will be from October 27th through the 29th and 31st from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Mini Carnival will be on October 31st from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Spooky House is by cash donation only and games at the carnival are one ticket per game. You can get four tickets for every one dollar spent. Tickets can be purchased at the Salvation Army thrift store or at their administrative offices. As you can imagine, there will be many kids and they want to help spread the smiles on their faces. If you're able to donate some sweet treats, you can contact the development coordinator at 671-477-9813 extension 114. Happy Halloween from the Salvation Army Guam Corps. And before we close out the show tonight, your birthday shout outs. On this October 11th, happy birthday to Christopher Santos, to my chap. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing Rocky. You are my world, your shout out says. Love you always, mom, dad, and the siblings. So happy birthday to champ Christopher. Jenna Elise Leongaro Antalan, happy birthday number 27 to our beautiful mommy, daughter, sister, and granddaughter, Jenna. May God continue to bless you. We love you so much. From your babies, Dre and Drew, as well as the entire family. So, Christopher and Jenna, today is your day. Sorry about the rain, but that does not dampen the fact that it's your birthday and you are both awesome. And you can be a part of our Cold Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club by checking out KUAM. Dot com. That's going to do it for your Tuesday primetime show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Mick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devonzo. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back here same time tomorrow. Good night. Happy day, everybody, and happy Tuesday. You know what that means. It's another edition of Health, Home, and Lifestyle. And it is the month of October, so it's the spectacular season. But as you all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And every Tuesday, right here on Health, Home, and Lifestyle, our Joe Nugget Triforce in our Think Pink series will introduce you to a brave breast cancer survivor. Think Pink this October in commemoration of Breast Cancer Awareness, presented by Island Cancer Center and the American Cancer Society. Meet Janelle Lasatin Velez. She's been cancer free for the past seven years. Don't let her soft-spoken voice fool you. She's one tough cookie. Velez says she's always been good with getting her annual physical, pap, ultrasound breast exam, and mammogram. Everything that was needed, it was just that one year I didn't get to do it. I was breastfeeding 2014. I guess that one year counts, but that's when I found out that I had my cancer in 2015. On March 30th, 2015, she went in for a mammogram. It's when the doctor noticed something wrong and requested they do more tests. In May of that year, she was told she has cancer. The first thing he told me I had cancer and then everything else that he told me, I was shocked. I didn't really hear a word what he said. And then I asked him what was the next step. 
and then he said that I would have to be scheduled for a surgery on my right breast. Leaving the doctor's office, the next steps was breaking the news to family. I sat in my car and right away I WhatsApped my husband. And we were talking for a while and he told me he'll support me with whatever I decide what to do. She initially didn't want to tell her mom and her sisters because she didn't want to worry them, especially since there was a history of cancer on her mom's side. On June 15th, Velez had scheduled surgery at the U.S. Naval Hospital to remove the cancerous tissue from her right breast. It was a success, and there was no scarring. After, she had to do eight weeks of radiation. She admits the dreadful part was waiting two weeks for her results on her margins, the surrounding tissue where the cancer was on her right breast. Eventually, all margins came back negative. With her husband on deployment at the time, her loved ones made sure she was surrounded by support. It was just my oldest son, and that time he was going to be 19. And then my youngest son, that was going to be two, um, he helped me with that. And then my Mali Lu, that helped me through this. Um, she, no hesitation, she took leave and took me to get my surgery. Velez continues to be surrounded by a strong support system with many of her friends, survivors as well. They were asking me when that short time I was gone, where have you been? And I told them to the side and they go, and then they all started opening up to me what types of cancers they had. So it was amazing how many women out there has gone through it. So they helped me emotionally. Velez says before she was reluctant to share her story because her cancer was found right before it hit stage one and she didn't require chemotherapy. She knew others with cancer had it harder than her. But she realized it's through sharing her story that others will know that they're not alone and will serve as a reminder to women to be proactive and schedule those annual tests and do self-examinations. Cancer is cancer no matter how small it is. You know, everyone battles in their own way. With this week's Think Pink, Jonah Gancharfritz, KUM News. Think Pink this October in commemoration of Breast Cancer Awareness, presented by Island Cancer Center and the American Cancer Society. So remember, that is every Tuesday. Make sure to take a look to find out who is the brave breast cancer survivor featured next week. And don't go anywhere because up next, Claire Calvo. Nutrition can be difficult, but we make it easy and convenient. It's always best to do it with a friend or a group to help keep you all motivated and in check. We have a new six-week group wellness program that is meant to help you to eat healthier and also to live a healthier lifestyle. Eating healthy has so many benefits like weight loss, increased energy levels, improved overall health, less doctor visits, and less money spent on medication. So if you want to start eating healthier and you have a group of people that want to as well, come see us. Our program includes meals for seven days a week. It also includes pre and post assessments and a standardized meal plan. We also provide nutrition coaching. So come check us out today. We make it easy for you to eat healthy. Let's get nutritious. Introducing the new Choice Bundles from GTA. Choose from the services you want and save big when you bundle. Fast internet speeds, unlimited mobile data, digital TV that you can stream anywhere, and digital home phone for Guam's most reliable network. The more you choose, the more you save. Over $1,000 a year. And for a limited time, bundle internet 75 or higher and get a $100 account credit. Visit GTA.net and use our bundle calculator to see how much you can save. GTA, we start with you. Dance party. Let's go. When inspiration strikes, say yes with the new Priority Unlimited credit card from First Hawaiian Bank. Wherever you shop, whatever you're shopping for, you can earn 2% cash back on everything you buy. From small stuff to big stuff to stuff you want. A card that rewards you for every purchase and helps you stay connected to everything that matters. Welcome back, everybody. Here is Claire Calvo with Weekly Renewal. Take a look. Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. Half a day. I'm Claire Calvo bringing you your weekly renewal. Today, I am here with my friend.
friend Troy Evan. He is the executive director of the Learn Tomorrow project. And he's going to share with us some exciting things coming up in collaboration with Guam Extreme Cleanup Group. Welcome, sure. Troy. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So yeah. share with us this uh, event coming up. Okay. So. Um, as you know, the, the uh, pandemic opened up uh, after the uh, governor uh, opened up these uh, live events, and we're very excited. Uh, 5Ks. So we've, I've been doing the 5Ks for quite a few years now, and um, I, I was inspired one day to, uh, noticing that we have hundreds of, gosh, sometimes thousands of people that come out to these events in the early morning. Um, it's a rush of people, impressive energy, and then two hours later, gone, right? So it's like, hmm. How can we, well, there's gotta be another way we could utilize that energy and that, that, those, those bodies, right? So those who know me, I like to uh, do things a little different, twist it up and make it, you know, make it my own kind of thing. And so we, uh, well, I thought about what if we did a, a run, walk and a cleanup, like a roadside cleanup, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so basically, long story short, what happened is people can come sign up for the, the, the run, walk and they, they can do the, the route, the course, and others can come and, uh, participate for the, the road cycling. Um, people are asking me, that, how are they going to they're going to run and then pick up the trash? <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny and goofy. So the afterwards, um, or the, during, uh, while they're in the course or after? No, they'll, they'll because of the you know they're walking and they're, right. they're cleaning up. They'll be they'll be uh, take a lo little longer, of course, than the runners. Oh, okay. So, so. I understood it differently because years ago, mm -hmm. over ten years ago, yeah. I used to have yoga events at different areas of Guam. Yeah. Like, uh, down at the Agate uh, Beach, one set Tengisen, mm -hmm. where we'd have a yoga class, a community based donation based class. Yeah. And then afterwards, we'd just pick up some trash after. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, ah, you're way ahead of your time then. What's that? You're way ahead of your, your time. That, 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 you know, the, but this is exciting. Activity. So they're going to be yeah. picking up the trash as they're on the route. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, the route is the same, oh. right? So they're, they're going to run. The route? Uh, oh, it's in Two Lovers Point. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. It's a nice, safe place. No traffic. It'll be in the early morning. Um, so it'll be out in the past. Yeah, yes, yes, very correct. Um, and then uh, the, everything will be on the Guam5k.com website. Um, and so one of the things we're excited about uh, um, was, wow, what if we were to, you know, goof it up even more by having the raffle activity, uh, you know, like after every 5k? Right. What if we put the raffle tickets in the trash? <laughs> it's great because it adds more incentive. Exactly, <laughs> so it, make, it makes sense, right? So uh, we, we thought that's going to be real funny and then a uh, nice twist. It's a it's somewhat a pilot program, you know, if yeah. you will, a project. Um, if well, it does, definitely something new. yeah, for sure. If it does well, my goodness, if, if the mayors, if they're watching, if you know, <laughs> if the mayors uh, see that, uh, you know, yeah, this could that definitely benefit their uh, village. Awesome. And, and the, you know, obviously the answer is yes. Um, you know, uh, it could be a monthly thing scheduled. And imagine. Well, you know, we have so many five days. Like you shared yeah. earlier, I had no idea. Yes. Guam has the most five days in the world. Yes. I don't know if you all knew that. Yeah. I had no Yes, no, that. nobody knows that. Um, but uh, it, it's... It can, but you did, because you shared yeah, it. Yeah, uh, so this is one of those uh, activities that we're doing to you know, uh, promote another project. Uh, we'll share that down the line. But, yeah. Um, did you share it now or about that? Yeah, yeah? No, so we're, um, we're trying to do a Netflix documentary. Oh, you can tell me about this one. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, Let's hear yeah. It. Oh, sorry, it's, uh, basically, long story short, we're going to we're trying to uh, humbly uh, putting together a documentary and honoring the Guam Running Club for their efforts for getting this activity going. Their initial uh, effort was to increase the health and fitness of the community. Uh, How long have, when, when were they established? Oh my goodness. Um, I, gosh, I believe the, the 50, 50 years. Wow. Yeah, impressive. Nice. And man, I, I've recently joined these guys and these guys, man, they show up and they turn out and they don't get paid for it, you know, and it's the love of being there. And, and oh man, I love it. I, it and that's it. when you know it's a labor of love. Absolutely, absolutely. And that also has a lot to do with, and I understand the, the connection. Because I asked you earlier, yeah. like, so share with me how the Learn Tomorrow project has oh. to do with these kinds of events. And yes. I asked, and I said, for me, I would think it, it's all about the Anapa Oh and man. That's what we're about. That's a, absolutely. About coming together in harmony. And absolutely. And Working together for a, you know a, a, a mission, a cause, and, and an end result. And if everyone just does a little, man, Claire, you, you know that you, when you do, if everyone just does a little bit, oh my goodness, a lot gets done. You know what I mean, that's why we gotta support each other. Definitely, yes, absolutely, yes. And so that's pretty much it. Uh, we love to have uh, 
you know, anyone who likes to come out and you know, take part in it. Okay. It's, um, and how can people find out? Go on 5k.com. Just go, go yeah. Uh, it's, it all the details. It, it's basically a run, walk, and clean up. That's what it's called. Run, yeah, walk. yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. Um, and uh, we look humble beginnings. We're not expecting uh, a, a large crowd, but I'm not sure if I made the right decision coming on this show because it, <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're, right. we're blessed, to, and thank you again, Claire. You always, every time I call you, you, you respond so quickly. Doesn't no matter how busy you are. Bless your heart, man. And uh, great stuff. So oh. thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you all for your time on your Weekly Renewal is brought to you by Calvo Select Care. We'll be back. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Half a day. Hi. That will be $20, please. I forgot my Mobile Smiles Drivers Rewards card. No worries. You can now use your registered mobile number to earn points. Can I use my mobile number to redeem rewards? Sure. Just show us your photo ID or driver's license. That's easy. Power on with the strength of a Ram during Ram Power Days. Happening now at Cars Plus Guam. Save up to $8,000 off on a brand new Ram truck today. My name is Jose Delgado, and you can contact me at 671-929-3645 to schedule a test drive, or you can visit our website at carsplusguam.com to learn more. Cars Plus, driven by you. Off today, everybody. It's another Tuesday of Health, Home, and Lifestyle. And with me is the Acting Chief Public Health Officer of the, the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Ms. Zenia Piscina. Miss, so we got the release yesterday that the testing sites will be closed, uh, specifically the one in Tizan. Could you share more? Sure. Um, thank you, Daniel, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about our, our the closure of our site at the Tizan. So, you know, we've been in operation since the beginning of COVID in 2020. And uh, it's been a long two years uh, since we've opened up that testing site. So we um, look at the data, we look at it daily. And I think in the last couple of months, we've been watching the numbers for the TGen site and uh, our numbers have actually decreased significantly. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, more people are doing um, home testing, which is okay. Um, some are, are just, you know, not not testing, or they don't see the need to test at all. But we do, um, you know, when before we did close, we looked at the numbers, and we've actually, I think, one Saturday we only had four individuals come out to the site, and so it's not very, um, uh, it, it's not, you know, good for us to continue the operation if we just don't have the volumes. Okay. However. We do have um, our additional sites. So we still have the Northern and Southern Public Health sites that we open for testing and vaccinations. And we also have our site at the Ducid, Ducid Beach Resort, which is the plaza. Some people know it as the old outrigger. So we do have testing available there from 9 to 12, and we have testing available from 2 to 4 p.m., which is longer hours than our original um, site at TGen. We also have vaccinations available at the same site, so you can come and get tested and get vaccinated, um, you know, at the same day. So same operational times, we open from 9 to 12 and from 2 to 4 p.m. Thank you for sharing that, Miss. So, so Miss, um, sure. so the one that's at the plaza at Ducid, um, how long will that remain open? 
So we have it operational for, you know, in the beginning, we, we started the operations for the travelers for Guam Visitor, Visitor Bureau. And so we're testing it out this month. And if it's a good operation and we continue to see the numbers, we may just continue with that site. So now it's, it's about, um, you know, just looking and seeing and observing and, and waiting to see what our numbers are gonna look like there at the site. Um, and I also wanted to throw something in, Daniel. So for anyone who needs testing and is unable to leave their vehicle, uh, maybe because they just don't feel well enough to walk up to the site or they have a disability, we do have a number that they can call and we will actually have our staff go out and do the testing at their vehicle. So if I can share that number, it's area code 671-998-4530. So they can call that number um, anytime Monday through Saturday from 9 to 12 and then 2 to 4 p.m. So, Ms. Zena, just to confirm, this number is for only those who have a disability or are too sick to leave their cars, correct? Correct. So if they're feeling A-OK -okay but are just sort of lazy, they cannot call this number? We would like for them to come down and that way they can get tested. And then we're going to push vaccination if they need vaccinations. All right, Ms. And of course... There is still the Northern and Southern clinics, but if I recall correctly, um, those testing sites are by appointment only. Correct. So we- Correct, it's by, by appointment. So there are three testing sites that are still open, um, of course, Northern and Southern and at the plaza. So there are still a fair number of testing sites where our residents can go to get tested and of course, vaccinated. Uh, Ms. Zena, is there anything more you would like to add or say about the closure of the testing sites? Um, just that it was a, a kind of like a, a sad moment for us, right? Uh, we started that since the beginning of COVID, but I'm very happy that, um, you know, the numbers are, are showing that, that our island is healing and um, yeah, and then we're moving forward positively. So, so it's a good thing. Any message you would like to share to our island residents who may still need these testing sites, even though they probably think that they'll never go there ever again? Well, one of the things that I wanted to um, stress also is please don't ignore that it may be the flu as well. Um, this is this is uh, we're already predicting it may be a, a bad flu season. So for those um, who have not received their flu vaccine, please get your flu vaccine. And um, and then if you think it, it may be COVID. You can use your home testing. That's okay. That's acceptable as well. But if you're if you don't have any available, then please come out to our sites and get tested. And um, we're there Monday through Saturday, nine to twelve and two to four p.m. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. Although one testing site is closed now, there are still three that remain open, and that is at the Plaza at the Dusitani, the Northern and Southern Public Health. Uh, Community clinics also do testing, but it is by appointment only. So make sure to grab that number, give it a call. And thank you again so much to the acting chief public health officer of public health, Ms. Zena Piscina. Miss, thank you so much. And we'll be back with more health, home, and lifestyle. My name is Leonza Selvage, and I have a four-year-old daughter who goes to lots of learning daycare. So with the rising cost of living, it helps tremendously with bills. I don't have to worry about paying for childcare services. Knowing that this program is offered to our people, most especially our children, I think something to definitely be grateful for. I learned about Program in Penelin from the mayor's offices here. And uh, my initial reaction to the program, I was actually in disbelief that this program offered free childcare services to our people. I wanted to give my mom a break for a little bit. So when I found out about the program, I jumped right on it. I was relieved because childcare at no cost. I'm thankful for this program because I don't have to worry about an extra set of bills coming my way. I'm grateful to the governor, the lieutenant governor, everyone behind the scenes that made this happen. Need help paying for childcare? Guam families can receive financial support through Programan Pinilan. Learn more and apply at guamchildcare.com. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh! Streaming TV. 
Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, or savings for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, streaming TV. All that melty cheese you crave with double the steak is back at Taco Bell. The double steak grilled cheese burrito. And now here is Jason Salas and our friends at Remax Diamond Realty with House to Home. House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. It is Tuesday, my friends, and this is the time when we talk property, we talk about rates, we talk about opportunities and we talk about talking and we have discussions and that's why Liz Duenas and Gina Campos are two of my favorite people in the world because I have learned so much from them and I hope you have too. This is House to Home and uh, ladies we are talking about uh, both opportunities and conversations now because uh, you find folks at the Guam Association of Realtors are actually inviting the candidates um, who will be everybody's going to be heading to the poll in just a couple weeks and you're actually bringing them on to talk about matters that are pertinent to your line of business so half a day. Day. Thanks, Jason. Yes, we today was the first day uh, the Guam Association of Realtors, our legislative committee, conducted interviews. They're not debates. There are interviews um, asking candidates questions on where they stand with certain issues and how they're going to deal with it uh, once they get into office. So today was the day for Democratic senators or candidates to appear and tomorrow it'll be for the uh, Republican candidates. And on Thursday, we are having the gubernatorial um, candidates along with the AG's, uh, AG's office candidates and the um, congressional candidates. So each day we've uh, dedicated uh, for these interviews. So today was uh, the Democratic interview. And unfortunately, we only had a few that attended we had um, Speaker Terlahi, which we were really appreciative that she took the time to show for today. We I had her on Fred my show, too. <laughs> yes, we. I, I'm going to mention names that actually took the time to show. Okay. So uh, Fred Berdalio, John Savaris, Dwayne Sinicholas, Roy um, Kananta, and Kelly Marsh Titano. And unfortunately, the others, for whatever reason, did not attend. And it's truly unfortunate uh, that we didn't, the Guam Association of Realtors did not have an opportunity to hear, um, you know, their stand on certain issues. We pretty much had a list of questions that we set, uh, sent out in advance. And uh, the objective was for them to respond in writing. And then we went over that um, in, in the format today. So we didn't throw any curveballs we pretty much um, had a list of questions that was established to begin with, and then we kind of covered it um, today. So tomorrow, again, reminder, uh, Republican candidates, please show up. Uh, not showing up is not an option because we want to hear about your views. And then the following day, which is Thursday, is the gubernatorial group, the um, congressional and the AG candidates. Okay, and so of course, the, of course, the Guam Association, Association of Realtors is the uh, very fine organization of which Liz is president. Now, uh, Gina, I got to ask you because these, you know, these interviews and these questions are being posed to the prospective senators um, deal with real estate. Um, not every senator, admittedly, or you know, attorney general candidate or gubernatorial candidate, is going to know everything about the ins and outs of the real estate um, business. So. Are you looking for more industrial expertise at this point or have they done their homework or are you looking more for solutions or a little a little bit of everything and just flexibility to to empathize and then, and then to go forward and hopefully put solutions out there? Well, for me, because I was just one of the realtors that logged on to listen in the committee, the legislative committee. You're not just um, one of the realtors. You're, you're Gina Campos. You're pretty good. But but 